For decades, researchers have suspected that those who have been infected with the Epstein-Barr virus, also known as EBV or mono or the kissing disease, might be more likely to develop multiple sclerosis. However, there wasn't a whole lot of research or scientific data to back this up. But in mid-January, researchers from Harvard came out with their study that they've been doing for a while, and we now have new updated information that some say is the most compelling evidence that there is a strong link between EBV and multiple sclerosis. Now, you might be thinking, yeah, yeah, they've done research on this in the past, this isn't new news. Or you might be thinking, I don't think this is true. I was never diagnosed with having EBV in the past. Therefore, this isn't true. You don't have to have EBV to have MS. However, I would encourage you to keep listening. This data is really important. And as you likely know, it has taken over the headlines almost everywhere you look in the MS community. In my opinion, it deserves to be in the headlines and I'll share why at the end. But first, I'm going to detail exactly what this article included and the two main points that it established at the end. My name is Dr. Gretchen Hawley. I am a physical therapist and a multiple sclerosis specialist at The Missing Link. I created this channel so that I could share useful, tangible information and tips to help you champion your life with multiple sclerosis, ideally giving you strategies to help you walk better and improve your day-to-day -day mobility and independence. So let's jump in. I am going to be referencing a study that was done by researchers from Harvard, and it was recently published in the journal Science. I will put the name of this study in the text portion below, so if you're interested and looking it up, go ahead and check that out. The researchers in this study looked at 10 million people in active duty U.S. armed forces over a 20 year span. This is the largest study and over the lengthiest time span to date. And that's one thing that sets this research apart from the research that has been done in the past. And it gives it a bit more validity. Of the 10 million participants, the research chose to look at 800 people who had multiple sclerosis and around 1600 people who did not have MS. This was what they were using as a control group. They looked at the medical records of all of these participants, specifically looking to see who was infected with EBV, which you can tell from a blood sample. What they found was that one's risk of developing multiple sclerosis increased 32 fold once infected with EBV. And they did look for infection with other viruses too. They weren't only looking for EBV, but EBV was the only virus that they found had a connection to the multiple sclerosis. Another thing that this study looked at, which was very interesting, was serum levels of the neurofilament light chain, also known as NFL. NFL is a biomarker that can see damage to the nerves. And this is often something that is included in the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. What this study found was that those who did not have EBV, they were not infected with the Epstein-Barr virus, their blood samples showed no NFL. Whereas for those who did have EBV, did show NFL in the blood sample, meaning that prior to being infected with EBV, there was no damage to the nerves. But after being infected with EBV, there was damage to the nerves, which is the same thing that happens in multiple sclerosis, indicating that there is a connection between the two, EBV and MS. Now I'm going to take a break here from the article and I want to share with you that we know that 100% of people with multiple sclerosis have been infected at some point in their life with EBV. Now, in some cases, this is symptomatic and you may have felt the symptoms of mono or the kissing disease, which often is feeling sickness, ill, uh, fatigue over an extended period of time, often several months. However, one thing that's really important to know that not many people do is that you can be infected with EBV and be asymptomatic, meaning you will have never known that you had EBV unless you test your blood samples and you can see that you have the antibodies for it. 
What we also know is that 95% of the adult population without multiple sclerosis has also been infected with EBV. So what this means is that having EBV does not mean that you are going to get multiple sclerosis. We just know that there is a risk in getting MS if you have had EBV. Along the same lines, this research did point out that in order to have multiple sclerosis, you must have been infected with EBV prior to your MS diagnosis. However, the researchers also suggested that this is just one of many causes of MS, that having EBV alone is not enough to cause MS. EBV is just one risk factor amongst a combination of genetic and environmental risk factors. The reason this study is so important and why I believe it deserves to be in the headlines is because the evidence is so strong and compelling that there is a correlation between the Epstein-Barr virus and multiple sclerosis. Now, of course, we've thought this to be true in the past, but we didn't have the data to back it up. But now we do, meaning hopefully we can start coming out with more research as to how to prevent the Epstein-Barr virus. Or once you've had the Epstein-Barr virus, can we come up with a treatment or an immunosuppressant to get rid of it? One thing that we know about EBV is that it stays in our body. Even if you're asymptomatic, or even if you've had it before with symptoms and then you recovered, it's still in your body and that can still affect you. So I'm hoping that the results of this research can help in future prevention and treatment of EBV. There are already some other studies that are ongoing in this area, which is very exciting, but hopefully they will have much more in the near future.